I think it might be the rhythm. I think it might be the da 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 da. They kept all the strings. They asked for more. <laughs> it's really weird how you can have a song that's completely finished in terms of the lyrics and the melody and everything, but you're just missing one noise, and it can really drive you crazy. I hear Jerusalem bells ringing, Roman cavalry choirs are singing. Frazzled. They were quite burnt out. I think they worked very hard on that tour, and um, um, yeah, they needed to heal a little bit after that. We had reached the sort of end of a phase with a record called X and Y, and we didn't really have any confidence to turn in any different direction, but we also didn't have the confidence to just keep repeating what we were doing already. This is how it started. We were in Mexico and we were at the Frida Kahlo Museum. And she has a painting called Viva la Vida. And I thought, oh, that's a cool title. I'd like to use that. And I, I have a list of titles that I like. And so it was in my head to try and write the song called Viva la Vida. One, two, three, four. And then a little bit of melody came to me about two o'clock in the morning. So I went downstairs to the piano and just then that chord sequence came out, then it all just came out in about 10 minutes. And then the next year was spent trying to record it. <laughs> so it was a really a crazy, fast arrival and then a very long process to finish it. I used to The song Viva La Vida, perhaps more than any of our songs, went through about 55 different styles. Mm. It always had the, you know, dun, dun, dun thing. It went from sounding like the police to... Uh... It sounded very heavy rock at one point and it sounded... Then it went completely acoustic and... I didn't love it when it was more... It was a, quite a rock song for a while. It was very heavy guitars. I didn't really love it then. I think I wrote probably about 15 riffs yeah, you for did. that song, and none of them. <laughs> they did. Really? Yeah, they did. <laughs> what about the one you played? Oh, there is one. Yeah, there is. If it's any consolation, I wrote a shitload of lyrics that didn't make fun. <laughs> We took a long time to work out how to do it, and then one, t one day we found that sort of church bell sound in the chorus and uh, then it was then it, then we finished it it's we really weird how you can have a song that's completely finished in terms of the lyrics and the melody and everything but you're just missing one noise and, and this time it was the church bell yeah yes yeah, so and that was a there's a like a dong 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 and that sounded like the song i just i remember chris hearing it and just his face lit up and it was Probably the happiest I've ever seen him in the recording studio. He just said, that's it.
Most Coldplay songs are built around guitars or piano, mm. but this one is different. Viva la vida. Yeah. It is. It's built around some strings. Uh, we have a friend called Dav, who is a string Italian string prodigy. David Rossi. David That's Rossi, right. and he 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 stands around a microphone and does eight tracks, and it sounds like an orchestra. It's really cool. I mean, I I'm sorry, I don't have anything, but you know, usually I I have the microphone there and just press record and I go, you know. Well, when I first heard it was uh, in uh, Chris' house, because I was staying with him and he played it on the piano. Gwyneth wasn't there, so, you know, we were like two boys in a big house, and you know what happens? You can't go to sleep very late at night. I said, like, hey, Dav, what? Are you, are you asleep now? Calm down. Okay, and then we just started to jam on things, and then he played me Viva la Vida. This is the version which is just the strings, Basically, you know, we recover first the loop. I, really, I can't play all the instruments. And when I want to do a lower line. I thought, oh, that's a good song. <laughs> and then, of course, uh... I used to... we have the dub later. This uh, David Rossi, does he write for you or? No, we, we, normally it starts with we have a piano demo or something, and then I'll call him up and say, can you come in and play this, this, and this. He gives me the chord, and I first thing I try to do is to go as close to what I hear, and then I, I tend to go a bit wild, you know, like melody. This stuff comes afterwards. So that's how it works. It starts with the basic foundation and then he'll try some arrangement things and some of them go on and some of them don't. And I actually was so surprised that they used, they kept all the strings because they usually are record in all their songs, they just fill it up. I mean, with every single angle is filled up with strings, but they kept everything. They asked for more. <laughs> Do you feel a big part of their success with that song? Well, I'm proud of it. It contributed to their first big number one single uh, in America and the UK. I didn't realize that until Chris actually called me. I was, just did a gig with Goldfrapp and I was uh, walking out of the... and I, I see a, a message and it, it left a message and said, Hey, Dove, we're number one in America and the uh, UK never happened before. It's also thanks for you. I thought, wow, what a gesture. That's it, that's why I get the job. No, of course not, I'm joking. <laughs> the reason why they're so great is because they play great football. It's not because of... <laughs> they could listen to, you know, whale farts before they went on, they'd still be amazing. But I mean, don't you ever feel that uh, when you, you're about to perform something, you, I mean, you probably listen to some... Yeah, we listen to the theme from Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. And that does make me feel great. So why not playing Viva la Vida for Messi and Xavi? Well, imagine how good they'd be if they listened to something really good. <laughs> <laughs> When just listening to the music, I feel like, okay, it's time to conquer the world or something. Yeah. And then when I actually start listening to the lyrics, oh, it's the other way around. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess it. I always had an image of a king in his castle when everyone's banging down the door, feeling like, okay, maybe I should change the way I do things. So there is an element of being able to change the world, but only if you change the way you do things. 
So it's like someone who's made a lot of mistakes but feels optimistic that they can change it again. But really it's just a love song because maybe it's metaphorical about being in a relationship and making a mistake and trying to fix it. Could be, I don't know. You don't know? Well, I do know. <laughs> or do I? <laughs> <laughs> Have you felt any downsides from getting a huge hit song like this? No. no. <laughs> so here, here it comes then. You've been accused uh, for stealing. Uh, right, on that song? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah, and uh, I mean... So who did we steal it from then? <laughs> Which one that? of those people? <laughs> How does that make you feel? That just makes us feel, okay, we'll write an even better album and you can all fuck off. That's how it honestly makes you feel. 